Hey, how's it going? So for this video, I'm going to be seeing unpopular opinions for mountain biking. This will be an Ask Reddit type of video in which I've gathered as much feedback as I can from different subreddits and I'm going to be showing the ones that got my attention and my thoughts on them. So if you've got any unpopular opinions or topic idea, drop it in the comments below. That will basically fuel uh, this kinds of videos on a weekly basis and it'll mean the world to me if you can subscribe to my channel maybe uh, drop a comment say they were around that'll be excellent so without further ado let's see what people have to say about this sir so casey james says that your local bikes up is trash they overcharge absurdly and everything and prey on people who don't know anything about bikes because you're easy money learn how to do it all for yourself for half the cost I would say that this would be a case-by-case -case study in the sense that we would have to study as much stores as possible and basically identify any kind of bad practices that would make them dishonest. On the other hand, uh, clients and bike store staff have to work on transparency and uh, basically uh, find ways in which to leverage this kind of decisions uh, don't just become a hassle. I think this is the reason why people are moving on from retail to the online space, hence Amazon, because sometimes it's just better to just think for yourself and make the Rebel purchase. Stock says it's super All wide bars. bars. I actually changed my bar width for Enduro depending on the course. Sometimes narrow bars get through tight lines way faster. I'm actually more old school on this part uh, for upgrading my bar width. I still keep my 720s on my trail bike. So I've tried it before on a different bike and definitely I can see the benefit in it. It's just that I haven't had the incentive or just um, the impulse to uh, make the upgrade. But definitely it's something that I've seen the benefit, but uh, I just need to, to like, get up and actually go out and buy it. So yeah, very good point. The latter VM hoax says that a road bike is a perfectly acceptable thing to have at your disposal. Actual training is more effective than just riding more, and wearing less protective gear does not make you a badass. It makes you a toothless vegetable if you ride hard. This whole road bike, e-bike aid, I feel it's just bandwagoning and redundant. I don't see the point. And yes, it's always good to have a structure. You want to practice, but uh, you want to practice with, um, with a plan. Otherwise, you're just going in circles. And as long as you're wearing a helmet, I think you're good. Unless you're a downhill rider or free ride, I feel that a uh, helmet is more than enough. Maybe invest in knee pads or elbow pads, but uh, that's on you. You should stop working says that I used to ride XC in my teen years and I don't really have anything against it, but I feel like XC is getting closer and closer to road biking territory. I have a cheap gravel bike as a commuter and it's actually real fun to take it on the local XC trails. I feel that races like the Cape Epic and the BC Bike Race have become the equivalent of the Tour de France but for off-road biking. At the same time, I feel that this is the way the industry moves and this promotes new venues and also new bikes. So that's when you get the cyclocross bike and the gravel bike and the XC bike. It's just like too many disciplines and you, you've got to know when to take a step back and just say like, all right, this is just what we need so far. You don't need to buy a gravel bike or a cyclocross bike like be be sustainable about the way you ride 745 turbo says that in the right situation in place i think e-bikes are awesome so yes i'm completely okay with e-bikes i don't care at all no hate against them a good way to say it is that uh let's say you're under supervision or you're no longer physically capable of riding the bike uh, the way you used to do it before, then yes, um, pedal assistance is like your best option. My mom recently went under surgery and she was asked to make the switch uh, to an e-bike if she wanted to continue riding. So I could probably see it under the trail riding context. Somebody who let's say uh, had an injury on uh, his or her legs and maybe uh, her legs are no longer working uh, the way they used to do before. Yes, maybe an e-bike seems like a good option if she wants or he wants to keep up uh, the way that she used to uh, or he used to run for. So yes, that's my take on e-bikes. Right, Babble Mammal says, probably not too controversial, but I think that 80% of riding gear is unnecessary and ugly. I completely agree with this. I think that brands like, let's say, Tasco or Hand Up or Fox, I don't know, you name it. I feel that most of their clothing just screams that, hey, I'm a mountain biker and I ride mountain bikes if you didn't notice and at the same time I feel that they kind of felt at the whole uh, the whole like uh, sweat proof small proof part uh, like in the end like I know this is just kind of like a gimmick at least for me uh, it's gonna end up muddy sweaty smelly so I mean why waste so much money on, on a jersey 
I just put on a shirt. I don't really care much about clothing. I may have a few jersey here, here and there, but I mean, I don't really pay much attention to that park. The swim just says that Whistler is a terrible place. The bike park is way too busy. Everyone is either ripping along without regards for others or shouting at you to get out of their way. The villas is expensive, the lift lines are ridiculous, and the riding isn't any more amazing than at any other bike park. Yeah, I feel that bike parks are a great platform for those who are looking towards uh, skills progression. So yes, that's, that could be a good idea. But I feel that at the same time they target uh, this kinds of uh, bike parks towards downhill riders and enduro riders. So not sure about it. I'm more of a cross country rider. So um, maybe they have XC trails, but um, this, I feel that uh, that's my main concern that I don't see too much exposure towards those kinds of trails. And uh, I'm not from Canada, so just uh, like the, the, the idea of logistics, uh, flight plans, accommodations, transport, transportation, etc. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that. Additionally, he dropped a few other recommendations, for example, Silver Star. So if you've got any other suggestions on your own, uh, feel free to contribute to the conversation. So uh, yes, I could also add, as far as I know, um, Panorama and Fergie, if I'm not mistaken. Bumberman05 says that pedaling is trash and all trails should be lift or shuttles. Yeah, uh, to some extent I feel that we all strive for comfort. Uh, in this case, a bike park with lift access. And although the, the idea sounds very enticing, uh, think about all the money you're going to be burning away on a weekly basis. Uh, you're just going to be going every day through bike park just to get uh, yourself up on the mountains to go downhill uh yeah sometimes it's better to cheap out and uh, go for any uh let's say uh natural trail non-bike parks and just pedal your way up um i'm an xc rider so pedaling is the norm and yeah i don't mind but at the same time yeah like the idea of full effects is always it's always uh tempting so yes uh, Alright, so I think that does it for this video, and yeah, these are the opinions that I found through Reddit, so I want to thank the people who dropped their comments on the threads, and yeah, so if you like this idea, um, if you wanted me to keep it going on a weekly basis, uh, please consider subscribing, drop a like, and uh, comment on it uh, if you've got any suggestions or questions that could probably be good for the next video, uh, they're more than welcome, so yeah, thanks for your time, and I'll see you guys in the next one.